Hello, I'm Brandy with Fluffy Fleece Macrame. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make this cute little Santa gnome. He's suspended from a six inch piece of cinnamon. This was actually that big bin was purchased at Costco. So the materials that you'll need for making this little Santa gnome are as follows. To start off with, we're gonna need a wool yarn, wool blend yarn, it's what I have here. It's a curly, and you can choose whatever color you want, but I prefer this ivory color. And on these, it is a total of 15 strands, and the strands vary from 13 inches to 16 inches. You could go all 16 inches, um, but I tend to trim some of these. Like you'll see, some are shorter and some go down longer just to kind of give it a varied effect on his beard. So it's up to you what you want to do. Um, I would start off with 16 inches and then just put a few in there that are around the 13 inches. From there, the other cords that we'll have, these are three millimeter. It's gonna be for the hat. So the, the actual macrame cord in three millimeter, you'll do of course your choice of colors there. And it's a three millimeter. And for this entire hat, you're gonna need a total of 10 of these cords. And these are 25 inches. And then you'll need one other cord, and it's gonna be to tie the gathering knot to make the, the little pom-pom at the top of the hat. And everything's gonna be suspended from a six inch cinnamon stick. That particular cinnamon stick I sourced from a warehouse store they had in their spices section. Um, so it was pretty reasonable, but that's where I've found really good consistent sizing on this six inch cinnamon stick. And then for the nose, I like the oblong bead, um, giving them a nice fat nose. And then there's a large opening on this bead. Um, you can find these most anywhere as well. A tool that I make that I sell on my Etsy store and my Instagram store is this little tool and it's it's used to string cords and stitches and, and hide your stitches at the back of your weaving. Um, underneath this section here, this is, this is a tape that's a fabric tape and it's not sticky. Um, it doesn't get gooey and it doesn't peel away. This one's a new one, but I've been using the same one that my husband made for me three years ago and it's never broken um, and it's still in perfect condition, but it's an, a metal that's used on airplanes to secure all the different bolts. And it's a, a stainless steel metal and it's very pliable. Like you can bend it and bend it in all different directions and it's not gonna crack and break. Um, mine looks really super ratty, the one I've been using for three years. So this is the difference. This is. The first one that was ever made. I've been using this for three years and I I weave and macrame a lot so it gets a lot of use on a daily basis. Um, obviously the first one compared to the ones I make now, um, the new ones are quite a bit more tidy. So you can make it wider and you can narrow it but this is going to be used on this particular project to pull the little beard pieces of yarn through knots that are already knotted to create the beard. And I'll show you how we do that towards the end of the video. But like I said, this has been being used for three years and you can bend these because a lot of times you want to kind of scoop um, at it and have a little bit of an angle to be able to run your cords through there. So I'll link this as well in the description. Um, it's really reasonable, but it's a, to me, a priceless tool. Okay, to start our project, I'm gonna go ahead and set aside things that I won't use for a little while. So at the beginning, we're gonna use the cinnamon stick. And this stick is actually just a little wooden stick that I use to push the beard cord through the nose bead. So we only use that once, but you could pretty much use anything that could push it through. Um, but I'll show you that towards the end as well. This is going to be used after we get all our knots tied for the hat. And this is just that single cord. 
It's a three millimeter and it's 16 inches long and we're gonna use it to create the gathering knot at the top of the hat. So we'll set that aside too because it'll be a little while. This particular one is not gonna be used until we are attaching that beard through the cords that are attached to the cinnamon stick. So that's gonna be a little while before we use it. So to start off, we're going to be attaching these 10 cords. Now again, these are three millimeter. There's 10 of them and they're 25 inches long each. So we're gonna attach these with a lark's head onto our cinnamon stick here. The easiest way, when, when you're working from a, a, a hanging position, like when you're doing a macrame wall hanging, your dowel rod or whatever will actually be suspended and it's a little easier to just put a lark's head on how you traditionally would. But when you're working with a loose item like this, the easiest way to attach a lark's head onto your dowel or your hanging stick is to do that. I'll do this slow a couple more times so you can see it. On this particular design also, um, I'm gonna be, this is a forward lark's head, forward facing, and then this way is the rear facing. I'm actually gonna be having the rear facing part of it um, face the front. So in the end, this part of the lark's head is gonna be at the back. So let's do that again. And I just take it in my fingers like that. And I run whatever stick that it's gonna be suspended from through that hole. So we'll just bring those guys down to the middle and we'll continue attaching these on with the Lark's head knot. When you're doing this, you wanna ensure that you're keeping your ends even at the bottom so that you have your full length to work with when you're tying your knots. So then we're working with 10, 25 inch, three millimeter cords. So when you attach them with Lark's head in the end, you will be working with a total of 20 cords hanging down from your suspension rod, or in this case, a cinnamon stick. So continue on, attach all of your cords with the Lux head knot. So when you start knotting the hat, you can actually leave, or you can choose to face your lark's head knot whichever way you want. I just preferred it to be this way. I feel like it looks a little bit more like, you know, the edge of a hat rather than having that extra little, that extra little front facing edge right there. I thought it was a cleaner look. So that's why I chose to do it that way. But you can do whichever way you want to. It's really up to you. Personal preference on that one. And this is the last Lark's head knot that we're gonna use to attach. We'll just kind of bring them across just to be evenly spaced. on that cinnamon stick. So 
So that's the back. And then we'll end up tying our knots to the front. So when I'm tying knots on an item that can move around on a flat surface like this, if it fits and I can do it, I always use my clipboard and just kind of secure that in place so that I can easily tie my knots and it's not gonna move around. Um, it's kind of frustrating if things are just laying loosely. A lot of people use um, cork board. That's another thing and you can kind of pin um, through some of your cords to keep it in place so that your project isn't shifting around and you're not having a hard time tying your knots. So this is one that I got on, um, on an online site and if you're getting one like that, I think your main thing is to get one of these solid clips and not the wire clips because it holds more underneath it. So we're going to start off on this and we're going to tie a total of five square knots. So you have your original 10 cords um, that hung down, which then create 20 cords hanging down. And you're going to tie your square knots in groups of four. These are all going to be left hand square knots. So tie your first row of five left hand square knots. They're a little loose from the top. All you have to do is kind of give it a little push holding the two center cords and that'll kind of secure it up towards that top a little bit better. two center cords. You're going to lay the left one over the top of all three of those cords. The far right one is going to be then placed over the top of your outside cord here. These are now, these are your working cords. The two center cords are your filler cords. So from there you're going to take that far right cord and go behind the two filler cords and then through the little loop and bring them up to the top. Okay, now you're going to go from the other side, right hand side. You're going to take the right hand side working cord, put it over all three of the cords and then take this left hand working cord and bring it over the top going to bring it behind these two working cords and through this little loop on this side. And that's going to complete your left hand square knot. So there you go. You have your five square knots across the top. This is fully now, the loops over the cinnamon stick, they're fully secured now to the cinnamon stick. So now you're going to do alternating square knots. So an alternating square knot is kind of nice because it evens out your cord usage. So like if you look, if you look at the bottom of these cords, 
if you just kept going with square knots using the same cords, these would continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter, and then these filler cords would stay really long. So when you switch to an alternating score knot, you're gonna use the four cords in between, like the two very center cords, and then your two working cords. Those four cords come from your above square knots. So that then creates um, an even use of cords because now these two working cords have come from what would have been at the row above your filler cords. So they're full length cords where these, what are now the filler cords are shorter cords. So it kind of evens out your use of your cords and you tend to not have to use um, as long of a length of cord when you do alternating square knots. So you're gonna do all left-hand square knots again. So on this particular one row, you're gonna do a row of four. So your first one, you're gonna go in between those two, you're gonna go in between those two, and in between those two. So in the end, you're not gonna use these two outside cords any longer. So separate out again. So you have two cords coming from the each above square knot and tie a left-hand square knot. If it's gotten a little loose from up above, you just hold on to the center cords and kind of push it up a little bit. So that is your second row. So you're not gonna use these two cords here. You can just move them out of the way on, on either side. So now you're gonna do three square knots. So separate them out so you have two cords from each square knot above and tie your left-hand square knots. A row of three of them. So when you're making this design also, you do wanna keep uh, your square knot, your alternating square knots here. You want them kind of snug because the whole design is gonna hang from this little hat. And if it was, if your knots were a little bit looser, it wouldn't be quite as sturdy. So you don't wanna spread them out at all like you can do sometimes with alternating square knots. You wanna keep them compact and tie your, knot, your knots nice and tight, snug up to the ones above it. That's why sometimes you wanna go in and just make sure that these center cords are nice and snug. So that's your third row. So again, we're gonna separate two cords from each end. So we're not gonna use those in these row, the row here. And we're gonna do two square knots here in between these.
Okay, your last square knot is going to be with the very center of four strands. There we go. I like to snug that one up nice and tight and pull these cords kind of individually. There we go. So now what we're gonna work on is the sides of the hat. This knot, these are diagonal double half hitch, but these are gathering all of these strands into this. So it's considered you're going from the bottom of the hat here up to the top. Um, so it's reversed here. So you're gonna start here and you're gonna gather all of these cords via a knot called a diagonal double half hitch. So as we go along, you wanna make sure that your knots are all evenly tight up next to the knots here. And then you also want them evenly tight from side to side. Otherwise, this could end up like a lot fatter than the other side and it would look a little bit goofy. So that's what you wanna focus on when you do that. But we're gonna start with your filler cord. This is gonna be this first one. And then after you tie your knots, the filler cord or the cord, your working cord is going to go into the center to become a more filler cord. So that's basically the process of this. It's diagonal double half hitch over your working cord. So we're gonna start off a diagonal double half hitch or a half hitch starts off with your filler cord over the top and you're gonna like loop it up and over. Then you're gonna bring it behind and through this loop. And you're gonna do that twice. So bring that nice and snug and then just push them down a little bit. And then seam, bring them over the filler cord and you're gonna run it behind the filler cord and through the loop. So that is a diagonal double half hitch. Now the unique part of this knot is this is a gathering diagonal double half hitch. So those two cords are now going to be two filler cords in the middle. And that filler cords are basically gonna to continue to grow as you knot over them with diagonal double half hitch. So that was the original filler cord. This is the cord that you just tied your knots with and then you're gonna use a new working cord to go over them. So I start by kind of bending this that way so that your two filler cords are sitting more on top of each other. And then this one, same knot, it's gonna go over the top of the two filler cords through the back. And pull tight through. Same over the top. So that's your second double diagonal half hitch. That cord goes in with the other filler cords and we're on to our next cord and tying the diagonal double half hitch.
So that's that side. So now you're gonna do the same thing on this side using that first cord as the filler cord. Push that up a little bit. So that's your two sides of your hat. And the next thing we're gonna do, I like to just kind of make sure that they lay evenly. And the next thing we're gonna do is a gathering knot around this, all of these knots right here, all of these strands right here. And that, that gathering knot is gonna be tied from the back. So I'm actually gonna flip this guy over and I just prefer the way it looks when gathering knots have are tied from the back they just lay smoother like this is going to be a four row gathering knot to combine all of those cords into a little pom-pom at the top of the hat so that's what we're doing next and we're using the 16 inch cord so it was the that remainder of the three millimeter and it was the 16 inch length uh, so we're gonna take we're gonna take this guy out and flip him and we're gonna put him back in there. Okay. So a gathering knot is going to do exactly that. It's gonna gather a bunch of cords together in one knot. For that, you're gonna start with a short the short end of the cord facing up and then you're going to have a little loop at the bottom and then you're going to hold these two together really tight with your thumbnail and you're going to take the long length of this cord and you're going to begin wrapping around the knots that you want to gather so you need it nice and snug on your first row and you need to keep your thumb on top of the two cords 
So the next time you go around, you're gonna go just below the previous wrap. So then that second wrap locked these in place so you don't really have to keep a hold on on your strands there as, as tightly. So we're gonna go through, so we have a total of four wraps at the front. So you can just flip it over and look at that and you can see that you have four wraps. So to finish off your gathering knot, you're gonna hold on with your finger at what would be the front just to make sure that this wrap doesn't loosen and the end is gonna go through that bottom loop. So take this wrapped piece and kind of hold it back at the top tight so you don't lose hold of it and because you don't want it to loosen up. And then pull this top strand up and that pulls the loop up and your goal is to get this strand into the wraps a little bit. So you're gonna just pull it up in there and you wanna be real careful. You only wanna go a little ways in there like so that it's the bend of the loop is kinda of in the middle. You can feel it, it gets a little hard. You can feel that it's in there. So I've cut the top one. I wanna cut the bottom strand also to ensure that I don't pull it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that so it doesn't get pulled on because we're gonna go back around to the front and we're gonna pull to even out these cords on this side. So we're just gonna go through and we basically wanna try and get it pulled down a little bit so that that little area is even with the other one. And after you've pulled one, put it up to the top so you don't pull it multiple times. So that's up a little more snug and things look a little more even to me. You don't have to do that step, that's up to you, um, but it's something that I usually do when I do a gathering knot. I like to just tighten everything up nice and snug. So now this is the top of the hat. So you need to make your pom-pom and your pom-pom is just basically cutting these off evenly. So I'll brush this out with the little kitty cat brush. And then I'll take it and trim it again. Just kind of flip it around and do it from different angles to try and get it more like rounded. be just like a little a little pom-pom on top of the hat okay now that we're done with the hat we're going to create the nose and attach the beard onto the cords and the cinnamon stick rod so I'll show you how you do that we start with the nose and the nose is going to use a total of three three strands so on these strands you know that we started off with longer and shorter ones and you want three of the longest ones. So I usually just go to the end and pull three out from the end like so. So 
this is what we're going to work with right now. And we're going to run two of these cords, yarn pieces, through this center of the speed. So we're going to kind of shove it in there a little bit. And then there's not really any specific tool you can use. I just push, go in there and I push it through with this little tiny wooden dowel. You could probably use a crochet hook or something like that. But you need the two ends or the folded ends to go through. So that, that's all you're actually going to need this little wooden stick for. So pull these guys up. Until you get them both through. And they'll be like even in there. So if you need to pull one down from one side, pull it down until you have an even loop. And then you're just gonna run your third yarn, curly yarn through there. Like that. So you're through the loop. You've got your curly yarn there and just tie a half overhand knot. Just kind of secures it into place a little bit. And then when that half overhand knot is secured, you're gonna pull these guys back just to where that overhand knot is. Okay. So now that's the bottom of the nose and basically to me, it's like his mustache, if that makes sense. And then this is what you're gonna to use to attach to the hat. Okay, so we're looking at it from the front side. So we're gonna do this from the back side um, or wherever you have a little bit more room. So these knots, you keep them a little bit loose when you tie your knots, not super loose, but because the back of the cinnamon stick, it's a little bit more kind of hollow or indented in, it's easy to get this little tool under there. So this is like a brand new tool, like I said. This is my very first one, which I could use any of them, but I'm gonna use this new one just to show you how you can narrow it and bend it and make it a little bit easier to fit through. So on this particular one, I would narrow it a little bit and then I would bend it up just to kind of give a little scoop to be able to get underneath these. So on this one, we're gonna to go to the center. So there's four or and we want to attach them under these two. So it's going to come up at the very center and it's going to go underneath two cords each side is. So we're just right now we're going to go under these two cords and back up. Okay. And this end is going to go through there. And you can bend it up to make it a little easier to get it through. And Pull it through. Take it up. So that's that side. Same thing's gonna happen over here. I'm not left-handed, so hopefully this doesn't look too painful while you're watching it. And pull it through. So, Snug them up a little bit there. And that's all you really need to do to attach him. Because he, he doesn't just pull out. You'd have to like really pull on him. You could on the back also do just a single knot. But it tends, if you knot it, it tends to push the nose up like that. So I do not knot these. That first one. It doesn't really need it. They sit there just fine. So when we're putting the beard through, we're not gonna put any beard through these last two ends. So we're gonna put two strands through each of these double strands here. So right now, there's six places we're gonna put two strands through each. So two strands through here, two through here, two through here, and then over to the other side, two, two, and two. Nothing through these ends. 
So there's our cards. I like to grab um, the longer ones. If I have any short ones, I use them towards the outside. And then I like to grab all the long ones that I've cut. And I like to use the long ones kind of more in the middle. So I think there's, this is two shorter ones. So these shorter ones are gonna be like more on the outside edge. And on this, what I would do on the outside edge, I would use a long strand and a short strand together. So I'm gonna set that up because I'm gonna work from the middle out. So I'm gonna do one more that would be like that where it's gonna be like a short strand and a long strand together. So I'm gonna set those up. And our next one that we're gonna do is gonna be right here. And we're just gonna take two of these strands through. And you just kind of pull them through till they're about M even and they get pushed down at the bottom of the cinnamon stick like that. So I do all the same side and then I move over onto the left hand side. And again, it's two strands going through. Bring them down to the bottom part. And we'll do it again. Looks like I missed a little bit there. There. So you can come from either at either side also. So I'm just gonna go from this side. And this is the last one, so this is where I'm gonna use one long one and one short one to pull through. And again, you don't have to do that. They can all be um, that 16 inches in length and then you can just give your gnome a haircut which as most of us macrame artists know, that's kind of the fun, one of the fun parts of making things is trimming up your macrame project. Okay, so let's look at it from the front. So we have that side done and we're gonna work on the other side. And because I'm right-handed, I'm going to do it this way because it's easier for me to get at these strands properly. So we're going to go underneath. Pull two through. And the last one.
That's it. Flip him around. See how he's looking. So we're just gonna give him a little trim. On the sides, I like to almost trim it towards the halfway point there on the beard. And then I just kind of match these up to the center and just take off some of the length as I go down. Okay, so we're gonna attach what will be the little hang cord. And I'm gonna go through here. You can use whatever tool you have that you like to use. I like this guy. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Grab hold of him, pull him through. going to be about that long so it doesn't show at the top there and I'm going to pull it down and then just tie an overhand knot with the two strands and pull them back up. That's what he'll hang from. And you want that knot really tight so you can trim it off. Just go in and cut it off there. And that's your little hang loop. Well, that's it for this cutest little Santa gnome tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I do thank you for joining me today. At the very end of this video, I will be attaching a really cute Christmas tree tutorial, so I hope you'll check that out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Tap the logo in the center of the screen to subscribe.